Yo, welcome to Metal with you too. Today, we're going to have a video, not by myself, but instead we're going to have a special guest. We have the one and only Alex Cook. Now, if you've listened to the Lake of Rage podcast, you should. Then you've definitely heard him before with either James Arnold on one of the retro videos, or you've heard him on a meta forecast before. He is a very good player, very smart, and most importantly, incredibly creative. So he's got a very cool idea coming up for you. So I hope you check it out. And if you've never heard of him before, after this video, you will absolutely love him. So let's go ahead and check out Alex's video. Welcome to Mellow underscore Magic Carp's YouTube. Today, Mellow Magic Carp's not on your screen. Instead, it's Alex. Uh, Alex Cook, if you don't know who I am. Uh, I've been playing Pokemon for a long time, and I occasionally have been on Mellow Stream and stuff for the last, you know, a couple months or whatever. So I'm here, I'm doing things, and I'm going to be here um, helping Mellow out with the, mute, the YouTube situations. So um, before before I get into anything, let me know what you guys want to see from, from me, from me specifically, if you, if you know who I am or you don't know or whatever. Whatever you want to see from me, let me know. I want to I wanna hear as much feedback as possible, how to improve all this YouTube stuff um, so that I'm giving out the product that you guys want, not what I want to do. I want to do what you guys want. So let me know what you guys think. So that's the, the first thing. Just before we start, let me know what you guys want. Uh, <laughs> today's subject is how to be good at Pokemon. People often ask me, hey, Alex, why are you just so good at Pokemon? And I just go, hey, uh, it's just it's, it's just my natural talent. But, uh, but uh, no, but for real, like... Um, in my mind, I think Pokemon is, like, really divided into, like, three main categories, right? Uh, those parts are uh, how you build your deck, how you play your deck, and luck, right? That's what, like, makes a good Pokemon player in general. And I, that's, that's just my philosophy on it, right? And, and these are all equal, right? What I mean by how you build your deck, you know, that's how, like, the text that you put in, the certain cards, the line choices, and all this other stuff that you hear millions of YouTube videos about. Like, hey, this is why I played this card, this is why I played this card, this is why I played this card. How you play your deck, that's actually the in-game skill. Like, being like, this is the sequencing that I did, this is why I attached here, this is why I attached here, this is why I retreated when I did this sort of thing. Um, and those two components are really about it. There's like a third component of like metagame calling, but that's not necessarily how to be good at the Pokemon TCG. That's how to be good in like a competitive environment. So uh, this is how you just be good in general at the trading card game. Now, in my mind, I, I come from a teaching background. I, I have a degree in math education and secondary math education and music education. So like I my degrees all, all help me teach things. And so my teacher brain is just like, hey, how do I break this down and help people out? Right. Like, let's say you want to be good at playing your deck. Well, I think the, the old U150 format definitely helped me out with a lot of sequencing, and a lot of gameplay mechanics that took me from just like a normal like, oh, he might win a city to, so like, a regional-level competitor. It's like playing that U150, how, actually playing the deck out. I think Cube helps a lot with how you build your deck. Uh, obviously, you're, you're a limited pile of cards, right? Picking cards being like, this card is good, this card is bad, this one works for me, this one doesn't work for me, and, like, having to justify all of those decisions in your mind, Cube helps a big time with that. There's this thing called Elite Format. I don't know if it's actually the name that other people use, but it was the one that we used when we, like thought of it forever ago um and what you do is you take four sets and you randomly you randomly roll four sets and you only build decks from those four sets um i think that helps with metagame calling because right now a metagame is so huge and massive and like there's all these different sets there's all these different players but if you shrink it down into like a more manageable bite-sized thing uh it helps you really zone in on what's what makes meta calling good and not so like there's that and then old formats i always i always harp 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 big time on old formats being one of the best ways to learn pokemon because it's stuff that people like already kind of figured out and they already did all the work for you so if you go back and play old formats and like you're sitting there asking yourself huh i wonder why they played this i wonder why they did this like that's using that same part of your brain that you do when you're trying to be good at like current day pokemon so i think old formats are probably the number one way to get better at pokemon you guys didn't come here asking for advice. That's not why you were here. You were like, oh, and Alex Alex made a video on Mellow. I want to know what he's doing. I want to start a new series. And this is episode one of that series. And that series is going to have me take on a deck building challenge 
and hopefully try to beat that challenge. Now, if I don't win that challenge, then I say, hey, hopefully someone in the community can do this challenge. So what I implore you guys to do is from now until next week when challenge number two comes out, try this on for size. See if you guys can come up with a deck that you guys built and beat this challenge. Week one's challenge is win five games in a row using only trainer gallery non rule box Pokemon in your deck. Standard format. Okay. So what I mean by that is if you look at Brilliant Stars and Astral Radiance, it's those first like what 12 or 10 or 12 Pokemon that are like reprints of older stuff. Yes, pre-evolutions you can use, obviously, like if you want to use the Frostmoth, you're allowed to use any Snom you want, but you have to use the Frostmoth from the Trainer Gallery. Um, that's the rule, right? And try to win five games in a row. Me personally, I got to four. And we managed to get to four other uh, last night. I hung out with my buddy Owen and played some games online on the ladder. I uh, won four games in a row. I beat a Leonzard. I beat a Reggie, a Reggie deck, a Mewtwo, Solrock, and what was the other one I beat? I can't remember. I should probably look that up. I think it was a Miltank Blissey. That seems right. And then I lost to like a Palkia or something like that. Uh, but before I get into the deck I played, here are the cards that are what I'm talking about. Here are the cards I'm legal. You can only allow to play Pokemon that you see on your screen right now and their pre-evolutions. So you can only play these ones and see if you can build a deck that beats the current meta with this. Now, the first thing that we looked at, the first thing that we looked at was uh, Kingdra Frostmoth, right? Give me one second. Kingdra Frostmoth is just like a natural synergistic thing, right? You have Frostmoth to accelerate the energies, Kingdra that does more damage for every energy attached. And if you can cycle those Kingdras, you should be getting late game one hits. Uh, the problem that we quickly realized was that like, even though you could get some of those pieces set up, you weren't dealing the correct numbers early game and you were just getting run over, right? Palkia just has to go like attach turn one, attach turn two, they win the game. Um, and that's not cool. And they also have Greninja and all this other stuff. So, like, we had no way in the deck to beat Palkia. And if you can't do that, how are you ever going to win five games in a row? Uh, same thing with Arceus, right? Arceus is going to attack turn two, and you're just not going to hit those numbers turn two. You're just not. Um, you can play as fast as you possibly can, and I, I, didn't, I think Kingdra Frostmoth, like, faltered because of that. Uh, so then we switched over to Gardevoir. We played like a dedicated Gardevoir deck where we're like, okay, maybe it's faster. Uh, turns out it wasn't faster. Um, you still didn't hit the numbers that you needed to. So I'm looking at this format, and we were sitting there, me and Owen were talking, and like, man, none of this, like, with the rules that we set in place, can we actually ever beat this challenge? Did we set ourselves an impossible challenge for week one? Um, and I got to four wins with this. This is a dedicated or a high roll glare and obstagoon, right? It's a 434 obstagoon line with some stuff going on around it, uh, two Orangurus, and just uh, in general, our strategy, our thought process was just high roll, right? Just try to go on ladder and hit five Reggies in a row, five Miss Blissey Mill Tanks in a row, five Soul Rock. Or, yeah, Solar Arc Lunatones in a row, right? Try to hit the decks that this deck just, like, hard beats, right? And that was the idea. Um, the Leons are, we managed to actually donk. I didn't get that one on video, and I was really upset about it. But they, um, we, like, pinged it. And then the next turn, we went, like, double ping attack and, like, managed to to take the win there. Uh, we beat Reggie's. We beat the other thing. And then the game that I'm going to show you is a game against Mewtwo Soul Rock with this deck. Um, some card choices, we decided to play, uh, three Raihan because we wanted to like really, really, really hit that turn to obstruct. And we thought that Raihan was like the highest possibility of doing that. If we missed like a turn one attack or something like that, right? It would give us the piece that we needed. It would give us the rare candy. It would give us the obstacle. It would give us the energy attachment. Like it would give us the things to hit turn two if we got knocked out early. So we thought three was like a fair amount. Uh, the one Shauna is just in case um, they realized, oh, I can't win and decided to draw Passenger Oblivion. At the very least, we played one Shauna to like maybe come back. Um, really, I just made the list in about two seconds. I'm like, this is what happened. Uh, <laughs> uh, two Oranguru. I, we, we also realized that when we were doing this challenge, uh, Oranguru Rotom Phone was like the main engine for everything because like we couldn't play Inteleon. You couldn't play 
uh, Bibberol. You couldn't do any of that stuff. So like Oranguru Rotom Foam was like the only real like draw support that we had. Um, probably could have used more Quick Balls. The Dark Patches were eh because of the three Raihans. Um, all in all, this deck was just kind of okay. But it did get us four in a row, which was pretty good. My oh, the other deck we beat was uh, Mewtwo V Union. Sorry, it wasn't uh, Blissey Mothic, it was Mewtwo V Union. Um, now, granted, we, we kind of fudged it a little bit because I had something... I, we would have won the game if one thing wasn't prized, so play a heavy ball in here. But the way that we theory crafted that is that you should, in fact, actually win that matchup. So even though they play Tool Jammer to stop your choice belt, uh, you hit them for, what, 180, which puts you 130 shy, right? Am I doing that math right? One, because 90, 90, 180... They're at 310. You're 130 shy. How did we feel like we could do this? It was with Goon Pings. We managed to go like Goon Ping, Goon Ping, Goon Ping, uh, Goon Ping or something like that. And then like Zig Zagoon stuff. Because like in the theory of that matchup, they're not putting pressure on you. So you should be able to, if you have all your pieces uh, on the on the penultimate turn, uh, be able to drop all of your, your goons down plus like scoop up nets and that sort of thing and you should be able to hit it um and we i had it like i had game like on board ready to go uh but my last zigzagoon was prized so like legitimately had game um i suppose a leon could help with that matchup too in case anything's prized but i mean we weren't we weren't thinking too hard about this uh, we got we got four in a row and i was like you know what that's close enough because we lost something like 15 in a row before that with all the bad decks so um just so i don't take up too much of your time um here is the game i'm gonna speed it up a little bit i only watched um i only managed to watch the like a first couple bits of this earlier so i'm gonna be commenting alongside of you um pretty sure this is sped up yeah it's sped up just a little bit which is good because you don't want to watch the full thing um i do make a misplay right off the bat i remember this um because what i end up what i end up doing here is you start the goon you click done and i draw the orange goo and i really realized i should have rotom phoned first and i like was like whoops i did not rotom phone here whoopsies so i was like okay we put the air balloon back draw the research that's cool rotom phone hit the energy and i'm like you know what i really want this turn one attach so i ended up playing the scoop up net for the orangu to get the turn one attached down especially seeing the rare candy obstacle in my hand and the mewtwo in the active uh, i remember owen saying something like uh can we dunk and i said we sure can uh there's a couple ways we could do it we could get a zigzagoon ping plus the rare candy ping and do 180 uh so i would just need a basic and energy right of the, a, ba a way to search basic and an energy or you could just rip the choice belt right choice belt energy and that's the way we could like donk this mewtwo this matchup actually turns out to be really good as well because you deal weakness on the mewtwo they're taking one prize and then they can't hit you with a luna world but this marnie here was devastating um it hits us into like a decent little hand here right we we put the road we tutor the rotom phone on top so that orangu was going to be able to make us alive in case we did get marnied which is what happened here so uh, I think I level ball a couple times. I say, you know what? I'm pretty sure I said we we're going to high roll this. Um, and there's the rare candy and we leave it on top. Right. And so I just research straight up, get the rare candy and unfortunately no second energy and no evolve. So I'm saying to myself, okay, even if we primate wisdom into it, we can't hit it. Right. Cause I would need an energy and an evolve, neither of which I had. So I can't just randomly Oranguo into it. So I'm pretty sure if I remember, if my memory serves correct, what we end up doing is just evolving into the Leon and going from there. So let's see what I decide to do. The other thing is like a level ball could search out some other stuff, but like not really, right? See, this is me deciding. The the air balloon was definitely a mistake. I, I changed my mind halfway through this play. Um, and the air balloon definitely should have gone onto the bench, uh, just so I could have a pivot for next turn. And so if I really wanted to, I could retreat this energy off, but regardless, hit the 60 so that a rare candy, like a, a Raihan is live to knock out. Um, cause you have the rare candy in hand, right? So if I managed to hit the Obstagoon plus all these other parts and whatnot, we were there. So. That's kind of the idea there, but a few misplays of the Marnie. 
that Marnie was not kind to us either, especially since we maybe had Donk. Who knows? Um, it would have depended on what we got off that sort of stuff. But this is the fun of the challenge, though, right? This is the fun of the challenge is forcing you to play really, really, really janky, weird stuff and trying to just get some wins on the ladder. <laughs> Um, it definitely impacts your deck building. It definitely impacts your decision making and that sort of stuff. Um, like I have, I already misplayed twice, right? This is this is something that you know you, you don't think about. This is lines and that sort of thing that you don't necessarily think about, but it should help you. So in my mind, we top decked the Raihan, which is insane. But I was like, oh man, I got the scoop up net to pivot off of the Orangu. That was the idea here. Um, regardless, I still don't think we have the pieces because we need one more little piece and. Marnie's not going to get us there. So we scoop up net and um, get some of the stuff down. And I think I go, we, oh, this is where, I'm going to pause this video actually. So we were counting, the reason I grabbed energy here was we were counting the number of outs I had to Obstagoon and the number of outs I had to energy. And the number of outs to Obstagoon were what, like three or four Obstagoons and a couple Evo incense. So that was higher chances than grabbing the energy. I think a lot of people would, te would be tempted because of the hand just to grab the Obstagoon a rare candy. But it is actually smarter here to grab the energy because let's see one two three four let's play this through one more time here yeah three evolution incense and four obstagoon so there's seven outs to the obstagoon five outs to the energy we're going to go the energy route so that was the idea that was me counting this go over grab the energy since training court's not live and we primate wisdom into the nuts absolutely never punished here um and we hit the 30 from the evolve, we attach, we uh, obstruct and get this knockout. So the only thing that keeps in this game is a little bit of luck. And I think, you know, with challenges like this and with things like this, you're going to need to get a little bit lucky. The problem is that if he gets return KO here, which he very much can with that massive hand of his, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're, st we're sitting on a zigzagoon. Uh, next turn's not too hot, and yep, there's the energy switch and the training court. I mean, if he didn't have it in hand, he had training court. Um, but he's he's hitting everything he needs to here. But if he doesn't pinch another Mewtwo, then obstruct is really gonna do work, right? Um, I said there's probably no way that we ever hit this, and I think there's actually a guarantee that we don't hit it. So I say, you know what? Let's just ping. Uh, I think I was considering. Oh yeah, I. This play here, I'll pause it because it's a little weird. Um, what I said this out loud was I didn't want the Marnie. Yeah, I didn't want to research into the Marnie, right? Because we put the Marnie on top and I switched into the scoop up net. I had, I, I had just conceded to the fact that we were not going to hit the rare candy obstagoon here. So that's why the Evo incense comes down for a Lanoon and we're just going to sack the Orangu and call it a day, right? That was kind of the idea here. And so I shuffled the deck because I didn't want the Marnie. Oh, I ended up not getting the Lanoon because I was like, oh, maybe we high roll the rare candy. But. And then I say, okay, we'll get Training Core one of these back. This is the fun part of the challenge. Like, this is the fun part. It's these grindy, weird games where you like, you're a little bit short. And you know your deck isn't just going to get there. And you maybe adjust your deck to get there the next time. Or um, you think about a, a line of play a little bit differently. It just helps you big time with like every aspect of Pokemon. You know, I think we as Pokemon players get into these habits, right? Of just playing the same deck the same way over and over again. So the big the big deal here was that um, all I needed to do was hit Evolve. I rip it off the top yet again. Um, we hit this. And I think I Marnie him. I don't know why I didn't end up Marnieing him, but I probably should have. Maybe his hand was just bad me thinking his hand was bad because he didn't bench another Mewtwo. I think the quick ball thought process was that I don't know if I have one in there. Yeah, that's like, I'm pretty sure I didn't have one left. So quick ball is just a burn. We knew we were going to get the energy back in here at the training court. And we obstruct. Great part here is that he can't come up and uh, return KO. He can't do anything, right? There's literally nothing he can do here. Let's see if I can get the audio of our game here. If he, if he bosses and benches Mewtwo, we, we're, we're in trouble. Because we played the Quick Ball. Otherwise, I could have played I could have played Raihan. I could have played Raihan and grabbed the Rod. Uh, watch him watch him attack, and then it'd be a little woo. 
Oh, you just unmuted. He, he forgot, he forgot. He totally forgot. You don't know. Alex. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna be like, ooh. You're gonna, you're gonna say something that could succeed. Probably not. Eh, I mean. You never want to be a boss. Uh, you didn't play boss. You didn't play boss. Oh. Okay, again, that kind of sucks because if he hits Mewtwo here, it's a little bit rough. Or maybe he has Brick Ball on here. Yeah, they don't play boss. Oh, he's going to go for Lunatone? Oh, that's a misplay. Oh, Mis no. It's a misplay. Huge misplay. Oh, psych. Psych. No, it's like. That's Florida Row, theoretically! Row, oh, theoretically! Get out of here! Woo! Theoretically, bro. So, I had to show. So, I had to show. Because uh, I remember the end of the game just being super, super hyped because we had finally we had finally gotten there. So, uh, just remember the challenge, you guys, is see if you can win five using only choosing only trainer gallery non robox pokemon uh here again is the list of things i think it is a great to help you get better at the and it's just like a lot of fun it's just a lot of fun helps you get better at the game let me know what crazy concoctions you guys come up with i'd be super curious and also again let me know feedback um you guys are going to be seeing a little bit more of me on Melo's channel here uh probably once maybe twice a week so um get hype i suppose uh, also, uh, one take under 25 minutes. That was the goal. Under 20 minutes, one take. We did it, boys. Minutes, one take. We did it, boys. We did it. So I'll see you guys next week for another challenge. And I might see you guys later this week, Thursday, maybe Friday, for just like another video. Uh, stay safe. Uh, stay safe in your fourth locations. I know this video is coming out probably tomorrow on the fourth. So stay safe. Have fun.